Welcome to Persons of Interest, a podcast featuring interviews with interesting people doing interesting things, diving into careers, personal stories, life lessons, and more. Here's your host, Derek Dockett. Welcome into another edition of the Persons of Interest podcast. My name is Derek Dockett. I'm your host for episode 50. Episode 50. Never thought I'd make it this far, but hey, it was a crawl to get there and really excited to share this one with you. Episode 50 featuring Joe Pot. Joe is the voice of the SIUE, Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville Cougars. Uh, he's been there since 2008. He's a St. Louis native uh, and SIUE, at SIUE, he oversees all their communications and broadcasting operations. Um, play by play for baseball, basketball, uh, several of the championships that they host for the Ohio Valley Conference. Um, Joe has uh, done all that work and more uh, in addition to also working uh, away from SIUE, SIUE working uh, over at Camel X, uh, serving as uh, St. Louis Cardinals baseball uh, in-game host. So uh, Joe's a very, very busy guy working in broadcasting and play-by-play. Uh, in this podcast, we talk about how he got his start, some of the things he's seen and done. Uh, he also provides some uh, advice for up-and-coming broadcasters who are looking to uh, make their mark and find their path in their career as well. So uh, episode 50, Joe Pot here on Persons of Interest. All right, Joe, tell me about how are things going over at uh, SIUE to start things off? Yeah, they're, they're good. Um, you know, this time of year, as, as you know from your days in, in college athletics, um, you know, we're coming down to the end of of the fall sports season. So for us, that's soccer and volleyball, um, really primarily. And then we're about to get into that, that dreaded crossover season where we've got uh, fall sports kind of wrapping up and, and conference tournaments and all that good stuff. And then basketball is legitimately right around the corner. Um, as we record this, we're going to do our kind of basketball preview event later tonight. Um, we call it Cougar Madness. So we'll do that tonight, a big, big event for students where we have exhibitions with the men's and the women's teams and lots of prizes to be given away. So we're, we're just sort of getting into that crossover season now. Nice. Nice. So I guess you've, you've, before SIUE, you started, you were doing uh, independent league and minor league baseball, correct? That is correct. So I guess, tell me about how did you first get the interest in wanting to do broadcasting specifically? Was it something, you know, uh, you heard Jack Buck, like most folks did, they said, I want to get into that. What drew you into wanting to do sports play by play and broadcasting? So I think, yeah, that's definitely kind of the the root of it, right? Because when, you know, when I was younger and, and probably when you were younger, you know, every game wasn't on TV. So we listened to a lot of stuff on radio and we listened to it was sort of like, at least for me, for my family. I mean, going back to my dad and my grandpa, like baseball on the radio was just always there. If you're in the car, if you were out, you know, in the backyard, whatever the case. So I think that sort of planted that seed. Um, when I went to school, it wasn't even I, I, I'd I definitely thought that I wanted to do something involving sports um, and eventually or, or originally went in kind of thinking marketing or business or something and I could work for a sports team and immediately at, uh, at the University of Dayton got involved in the student radio station and hosting a sports show with my roommates and, and friends and then eventually taking on some play-by-play. The first play-by-play I ever did was minor league hockey in Dayton, Ohio. And the team, the Dayton Bombers did not have a broadcast outlet. So our student radio station was it. And so there were like two or three of us that started doing play by play for this minor league hockey. And I was like, this is it. This is where I want to be. This is where I should be every night. I mean, I should be in an arena doing broadcasts and immediately flipped my major to, uh, you know, communication and, and mass comm and, um, just went from there, um, started doing sports information stuff 
at Dayton while also doing some local cable broadcasts of our sports teams at Dayton, doing student radio for different events there. So I, I was like the minute that I got into it, I was like, yeah, this is right. Nice. Nice. So hockey, I haven't heard you call <laughs> hockey before. How did you enjoy that? Cause hockey is pretty fast paced. Yeah. I loved it. I, I loved the, I loved the pace of it. I loved just, you know, that, that is, and that, you know, that's one of those where if you, you feel like if you miss a pass, it's not a huge deal if you're on radio, right? You just, you're making sure that you're just kind of calling the game. And I'm sure I was terrible at it. I haven't really gone back to listen to that. I'm sure it was just brutal, but man, it was a lot of fun. And it was fun being, you know, the pseudo voice of this, you know, low level minor league hockey team. And that definitely kind of just started it all forward. So from there, did you jump into the baseball yeah, I did. You know, it was actually a lot more basketball back then, okay. um, doing basketball for student broadcasts. Um, and, you know, baseball was always, like I said, just kind of in the back of the mind. So yeah. did a couple of internships here in town during the summers, um, came back after graduation, and there really wasn't anything full-time and radio available. But the folks that I had worked for and worked with at radio stations – kind of steered me towards the Gateway Grizzlies who had not played a game yet. And so I went in and met with their general manager, who presented me with this office full of radio equipment and said, we have this guy and he's going to do our broadcast for free, but we want to set up this sort of radio network. Can you run all this equipment? And I looked at it and I was like, sure, thinking, <laughs> well, I guess I'll figure it out because uh, that was the way I was going to get in. And so that's what we did. Um, we ran this sort of crazy archaic network from this little press box at at Soje Field, which was nothing more than a Legion field in the middle of Soje. Um, and when the broadcaster was on the road, he called me, which connected to this little box that allowed me to hear him. The radio station then called me, which allowed them to connect. I played all the commercials from this press box and then on home games that meant i got to do color a couple of innings of play-by-play -play. well i found out really quickly that that particular broadcaster was going to move on he wasn't going to stay past the season i think his wife had gotten a job out of town he was going to be out as soon as the season was over so but at that point it was just like all right if i can get through this first year do whatever i can make myself useful do a little broadcast then there's a good chance that i can slide over and be the number one guy that's exactly what happened and then from 20 from 2002 to 2010 it was it was me and you have what i call one of my favorite unknown baseball calls with a uh, a ball coming into the first box can you tell that story yeah that's actually after i got here uh to siue um <clears throat> that was in uh man 2011 maybe but so we're at murray state and murray state at the time had no stands they just had this sort of terraced oh. hill behind <laughs> the ballpark and from what i understand it was kind of a throwback to their original ballpark which that's how it was set up but anyway at the top was this tiny little you know cinder block press box mm -hmm. um big windows in front that had you know the big planks of plywood that they just lifted up and propped up during a game so a, a an SIUE player bunts the ball. Keep that in mind. Bunts the ball. It spins up off of his bat, up over the backstop, and comes just whistling towards us in the press box. And nobody thought it was going to hit us. And it came down at such an angle, it went right into the glass window, right, I mean, directly in front of me, which is what makes the audio so good because I had a crowd mic sitting right there, <laughs> a, a natural, a Nats mic sitting right there. And so this perfect glass breaking sound accompanies my call. And that's what that's what made it so good. And it ended up, you know, a little bit going viral on Deadspin and awful announcing and those kind of things. So. Babin deals, Becker bunts, pops it up. It's coming right oh. back here. Right above her head. 
That was the window shattering right straight in front of us here at Murray State. Can I have that baseball, John? <laughs> That's going to be a souvenir if we uh, make it out of here. So I think everybody is okay, although a little uh, worse for the wear, maybe. Nice. That's that's one yep. of my all time favorites. You you're a consummate pro. I think that's the <laughs> one thing. You you handle everything as if every game it's important. Um another one of my favorite ones is when um gosh, I can't remember if it was fourteen or fifteen, but SIUE and Loyola playing for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season uh men's soccer title um at Cordy Field and Cordy Stadium and the Cougars won the game and the call was just phenomenal. It was a it was a tap in and you were just <laughs> screaming. And I used that clip uh, in the year in review uh, video that I did for the Valley at the time. Keegan McHugh did a great job to get his foot in there and disrupt that cross. Danzy is free. Jabari Danzy in on goal into the 18 yard box and the tap in. Tapping goal! SIUE! Missouri Valley Conference champions with the overtime goal! It's Devin Jamba from Jabari Danzi! 1 0 in overtime, and the Cougars are the number one seed. They've won the regular season title for the first time in school history. Every call, like it doesn't matter if it's minor league, independent league baseball, or if it's college, whatever it is, all of your calls have that feel, that energy in them, that they are important. And that's what I feel uh, sets you differently from you know, some of the other uh, broadcasters that you hear from the college level or, or whatever it may be. How do you continuously try to do that game after game, especially when it's um, like you're getting ready, you're gearing up for basketball. There'll be, you know, multiple games a week. How do you keep that energy going through so many seasons and games? And at SIU, you're doing it for multiple sports. I think, um, I mean, honestly, and I, and I appreciate that because that I take that to, as, a, as a great compliment because I want people to, I, I hope that I am accurately conveying the emotion of the event. I think that is that is sort of my responsibility as whether I'm doing this on on radio or on a stream. You know, if it's ESPN Plus, as it is for a lot of our sports now. Um, so I want to, and and that's the thing with that. You know, going back to that 2015 call, the the Missouri Valley regular season title. Obviously, uh, it was a first regular season title. It was the first. Um, it was the first conference title, regular season title for the men uh, since coming back to Division One for SIUE. They had won a tournament title the year before, actually, in 2014. Yeah. Won this, so that was the first regular season title. And, and you know, obviously the tournament title is, is great and it gets you into the NCAA tournament. But that regular season title, I mean, that's what you're playing for the entire year um, if you're, you know, if you're in a conference, I mean, it's just your, that entire year. It's like, it's like in baseball winning that division title. It does mean something. It, 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 it pays off the, the whole regular season. So I think that was part of that. That was also, I think overtime, right? Wasn't that an overtime game? It was so. like a zero, yeah. zero game. And like, so yeah, yeah, just everything kind of built up then. But I think, yeah, I just, I, I enjoy it so much and I enjoy being that link from the folks tuning in, whether it's parents and a lot of times it is parents, obviously in our, um, in what we're doing for, for college athletics, certainly. And so I, I feel like that they, they deserve that. They deserve my full attention and, and my conveyance of what the, you know, what the emotion is. I, I think back to the end of last year, our men's basketball team wasn't great and frankly hasn't had a great season yet, but they needed a win in the last home game of the year over Moorhead State, who is at least going to be the two seed and maybe the regular season champ. They were really close. Maybe they were locked into the two seed. Regardless, SIUE could guarantee themselves a spot in the postseason tournament with a win. Because in the OVC, you don't everybody does not get into the postseason tournament. And we had this back and forth game between SIUE and Moorhead State that was just every single possession kept ramping up in importance. 
and nobody missed. It was like SIUE would dunk on one end on a break, and then <laughs> Moorhead State would come back and fire up a three. And it so it was one of those just really fun games that we did um, that I that I think back to a lot uh, last year. And I hope that you know it's a sign of things to come this year because I think we've got a chance to have a good basketball team here this year. Nice, nice. You mentioned um, now, of course, uh, with the onset of streaming and things like that, um, it's not just radio. You're also having to do games on uh, online video streaming, ESPN3, ESPN+, and I know SIUE has been doing their fair share of that as well. We often hear people uh, uh, talk about the difference when it comes to broadcasting when doing radio from TV. Obviously, when you're in radio, you know, people driving, they don't have the visual. You're having to talk a bit more. You're describing more of the action. TV, they're there. They can see it. Or, sorry, they're not there. They can see it. They're watching it. So you're doing a little bit more, I guess, creative storytelling and setting the scene and and just, you know, being descriptive or not as descriptive as you might need to be. But for you, the differences between um, doing a game on radio or audio only versus doing uh, a visual in, in nature. What, how do you prepare for one or the other? I prepare uh, pretty much the same, just making sure that I know both sides. Cause I also understand that, you know, while I am working for SIUE, especially when it comes to those ESPN plus broadcasts, those are, they're very much meant to be a kind of a conference broadcast. And and I understand mm-hmm. that, that there are parents, there are whoever fans watching from the other team. And so I, I, I want to be as prepared as I can for both sides. Um, I do probably skew a little bit towards the home team, but I try not to be over the top with regards to that. Um, I'm sure that most people would say I have more of a radio call, so I am more descriptive probably than a lot of folks are, but we also have the ability to do some other things utilizing, uh, in my case, a student broadcast crew to on the ESPN plus, you know, to show some other things and kind of get into some other things that are going on with, uh, with more visuals. And that's, we really, uh, we do a simultaneous call radio and ESPN plus for basketball. So that's been the biggest balancing act that I have in trying to sort of let the pictures play out, but also don't forget that there are people listening on the radio and they're not seeing the same, uh, dunk package maybe that is, you know, that is showing on ESPN plus. So that's where I have the biggest balance is trying to do both at once. But I do think that my call kind of skews towards the, the radio call. So I'm a little bit, I think I'm a little bit more descriptive and more radio like even with an ESPN plus call. Yeah. So fast forward now, uh, you've gone from, uh, and you still are doing uh, the, the work at, at SIUE, but you uh, have this opportunity, this awesome opportunity. And I can't imagine, I, I, I definitely don't want to steal the thunder, but your, your uh, opportunity of working with Camo X. And I think, I guess I call it, you become more of the scene setter, the pregame, postgame, in between uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals and on Camo X. Um, tell me about how that opportunity popped up, uh, how it's been working for you, because you're still doing your, your work at SIUE and baseball season now is over. But of course, the, mo- the majority of it happens in the summer. Uh, but, you know, baseball starts, you know, March, April and, and runs up until uh, in some cases you, you want to go we deeper. Wish it was longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story for the Cardinals this year. Um but it's a huge, huge opportunity for you. And I can imagine, as we said at the beginning of our conversation here, that you, know, you, you think about your, the people you idolize as broadcasters and what they do. Here you are working alongside of John Rooney and, and Mike Claiborne. These guys are on the Cardinals radio network that have been doing this. Um, and you're setting the table for them on a game by game basis. Tell me about the opportunity with the Cardinals, how that came, came to be and and what it's been like so far for you. Uh, I think that ultimately it, it came to be from, you know, folks that I knew the connections that I had already, but I got a call in the summer of 2019. It was like June, 2019. So we're in the middle of the summer, right? And it's a call from Tom Ackerman, who is the sports director at Mm -hmm. Camo X. He wanted me to, 
uh, just have lunch with him and Steve Moore, who is the program director at KMOX, who also, by the way, was the program director at KFNS in 1997 when I interned at, uh, oh, wow. at KFNS, yeah. the all sports state, the only all sports station at the time in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, now, I have no idea whether I, I did not keep in great touch with with Steve Moore. One year, the Grizzlies did our online broadcast through KMOX's website. So talk to Steve a little bit then. So I don't I have, I really don't know to this day if, if that played any part. What I do know played a part, obviously, is I you know kept in touch with Tom you know, always just kind of chat and said, Hey, you know, if anything ever comes up or if there's anything ever I can do for you, you know, let me know. I'm, I'm interested. I'm, you know, like we talked about, I grew up listening to the Cardinals on camo X um, as most people did in St. Louis. And as you say, a lot of people did in the Midwest, in the South, and as, as far reaches as that station can hit, not only that, but the Cardinals radio network still to this day is the largest in major league baseball. So he presents this opportunity of and and the way it came up is they have a Monday through Friday guy and then they had sort of a part time weekend guy and they were doing those two guys were doing Cardinals and Blues at the time. The Blues, who had just won the Stanley Cup and were making a move over to FM radio to uh, ESPN 101 ESPN in St. Louis, they were taking that part time guy with them. He was going from Camo X to 101 and he was going to be their full-time pre and post game host and host a lot of blues centric programming, opening up a spot on the weekends. And they asked me if I wanted it. I, I mean, I was, I, I had no record. I had no idea going in that it was anything Cardinals related that I, I just, I, he literally just said, we want to have lunch. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> and I, I was like, uh, I mean, of, of course I do. And I had to, I had to talk to, you know, bosses here, people I worked for here at SIUE, I talked to, you know, I'd, I had given up minor league baseball. So the 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 athletics uh, gig sort of gave me back like a summer and all this stuff. And now I had to go back to my wife and be like, so, you know how I had all that time before, like in the summer? Like, uh, what if I didn't? Uh, everybody was everybody was so supportive. The, the folks here at SIUE, um, my wife. My family, like everybody was so supportive. And so to be able to get on board and to, you know, be a basically be a part timer at KMOX. So I, I, you know, I do some other stuff just depending on where they need people. My regular spot is that weekend, Saturday, Sunday, pre post the I do Friday morning, early drive, just uh, anchoring sports. Um, it's just it's awesome. It's amazing to be part of a, a legendary station like that. It's it's certainly amazing to be part of the Cardinals radio network, the team that I grew up watching and supporting and listening to. And um, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. It's, and it's, you know, I've been through a couple of different now full-time people in that spot. So for a couple of summers, I've been like one of the main guys too, filling in on yeah. weekdays and doing a lot of games. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it is, it's been, it's been awesome. What's been the one thing that you've been doing this for a while, but, Obviously, you, it, I think it's always something where people are continuously learning. Like I'm always continuously learning stuff in, in my day to day. But for you, the consummate professional at, and always trying to be better, what's been the one thing you've picked up since uh, being able to work alongside, the, alongside those pros at Camel X that you've been able to take back and, and use it to get better? Man, I just I just listened to uh, like like John Rooney, for example, I listened to the way he calls a game. I think that I pick up a lot of things. Um, from, and, and not that I'm, you know, copying him per se, but I do listen to some of the ways either he describes a play or he sets up a play, or then he goes back and details a play. There are things that, that I hear and that I pick that he does. I'm like, man, that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I see why he does that. And that's something that I should kind of try to do. And like, and I'll, and I'll be honest, I, I, man, way back when we, when I started in 2019, one of the first times I went up into the booth to talk to uh, Mike Shannon and, and John Rooney at the time. First thing John says to me is, man, I love the way you call a basketball game. And I was like, what? Like <laughs> you lit. Cause, cause John's a great basketball play by player too. Yeah. You know, he does a lot of yep. stuff uh, with the Valley. Um, he's yep. done tons of NCAA tournament games for like Westwood one and the networks and stuff. So 
the, for him to just straight out say, man, I love to, the way you call a basketball game. You know, that any one of the things he said is he's like, he's like, you know, I always know where the damn ball is. I mean, that that's like, oh, that's great. I that is a huge compliment coming from somebody like John Rooney that, that I'm doing something right. And so I think about that <laughs> uh, when I call basketball, too. I, I better know where the ball is. So but yeah, yeah um, just, you know, like I said, I, I wish I could come up with something specific, but there are tons of things all the time that I'm listening to. I'm, I'm always listening. I'm, and it's sometimes too, it's like, man, I do not like that. Didn't make any, that didn't make good for me at all. Like I, I don't want to do that. Don't do, don't do that. If I hear something from somebody that I, that I don't like, you know, I pick those things yeah. up too. So if you were to provide advice to an aspiring broadcaster, um, regardless of the sport that they may be interested in, um, top two things that you would advise them, uh, to, to, to progress their career, uh, man, top two, well, for, you, you have to get reps. I mean, I, you know, I, I go back to that minor league hockey. I get, you know, I did, I did a bunch of high school basketball and football here in St. Louis Shoot. just for some of the, some really small stations too. If, if you recall, there was a time we had two or three really small sports stations but a lot of them were doing a lot of high school stuff on friday yes. nights and and saturday yeah. days and all that so i did a bunch of that as much as i could as well and obviously doing the minor league baseball it is it's daily you know you might have a monday off here or there but it's daily and that that the chance to do it daily is the chance to get better because you're just caught and for the first Man, three, four years, I didn't even have like an intern or anything. I eventually started where I would have an intern and they would take a few innings of play-by-play -play a night. But at the beginning, it was like just me. It was nine innings of me every night or more, depending on obviously. And some of it not good baseball, right? Uh, so, uh, so it was it, – it's that's just a chance to get better. Um, and the other thing is, like I said, like listen. Like listen to other people. There are so many things that you can pick up talk to other people. I'm, I'm never afraid also to talk to someone or, you know, it, it's been a while now, but give them my tape, give them my stuff, send them a link and like, Hey, can you listen? Can you pick this apart? And I've had plenty of, of major league broadcasters that are willing to do that. Bob Carpenter used to call the Cardinals has been great. Did it for me numerous times. Joe Buck did it for me several times, you know, listen to stuff, give me advice. Um, Pat Hughes with the Cubs, D. Wayne Stats, who calls the Tampa Bay Rays, who's an SIUE alum, by the way. Um, just all these things that you can pick up and all these things that they can pick up that maybe you're not picking up the, of something you're doing well or not well. What's your favorite sport to call? I knew that that question always comes up. Uh, <laughs> Saved it to the end. It at least. feels like it. Always, it, it it's usually what's what uh, sport I am in at the time. So. Okay. But I, I think I'm most identified kind of as a quote baseball guy. I did a lot of baseball, obviously. Still call SIUE baseball. Love it. <laughs> obviously, the work with the Cardinals. But get me into the middle of basketball season, and it's as good as it gets. I mean, I enjoy yeah. all the places that SIUE goes, all the places I've gotten to go with SIUE. I've gotten to call games, you know, uh, at Indiana, um, you know, obviously at Mizzou and at SLU, both places that SIUE will go this year. Um, and, and it's just some great atmospheres. I've gone to Hawaii with the Cougars. I've gone to Cancun with the Cougars. Um, so, so when I get in the middle of basketball season and, and college basketball season is, um, it's, it's great. And I love it. And I like I love the difference too, because there's a huge difference in calling baseball and in calling basketball and basketball, yeah. the sport is, is kind of dictating your call, right? It is, it's right. end to end. You don't, I'm not telling you backstories about a lot of these players, maybe unless they stand at the free throw line for a little bit. Exactly. In baseball, I'm telling you all kinds of backstories and all these yeah. funny things that I know or, you know, side pieces or where they played in the summers and all kinds of stuff. And so I enjoy the two different styles as well. Is there a sport that you haven't called that you would like to? Uh, I'm. Are you done soccer? You just, you mentioned hockey to me yeah, earlier. I do, uh, I do volleyball here. Uh, I call yeah. two Missouri State High School lacrosse championships, um, okay. which actually two of my uh, – so four actually because they have two divisions, but two different years. Um, 
And that was really gratifying for me because I honestly didn't have a lot of background in lacrosse. My brother-in-law was running the Missouri State uh, High School lacrosse. And in a, in a weird connection, um, what used to be Fox Sports Midwest was, was doing games for us at SIUE. He said, well, they do the hockey championship. You think they would do the lacrosse championships? I said, I don't know. And the first year, the Cardinals were a national broadcast on the day that the lacrosse championships were going to come up. So Fox Sports was like, yeah, we've got an open day. We would like to do it. And so and my brother-in-law is like, well, I want you to do it. And I dug in, Derek. I was I. I did so much research and I sat down with my brother-in-law and we went over rules and plays and strategies. And the, the coaches of the teams involved were just fantastic to sit with and talk to about the sport. And we got done and I was like, man, that was, that was awesome. It's it's a great game. First of all, it's a, it's a high energy, fast paced game, but to be able to, you know, pull off those broadcasts, I had a really good uh, color guy who was a, coach in the area as well so that was that was really gratifying so to back to your original question what would i like to call um what what do you got i mean i'll call it i'll i'll learn it and i'll call it (laughs) you done some track i have done track uh we were the first school in the ovc to stream track and field when the championships were here in uh 20 that might have been 2015 or 2016 and actually, it's back here this year, so we'll we'll set it up and we'll do it again. Um, nice. So yeah, and then again, that that's on that was on at the time. It was on the OVC Digital Network. It'll be on ESPN yeah. Plus. So it's more a little bit of just kind of like recapping, giving you some some of the people involved. It's not a lot of full on play by play, but yeah, we did that and yeah. we'll do it again. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I know you'll be able to pull off because, like I said, you. <laughs> I think people do not understand how much work goes into like I've, I've driven in, in a car with John Rooney to go to a basketball game back in my time in the Valley and, you know, p- p- prepping, going through the notes and then getting there, getting to the arena to sit down and talk to the coaches, you know, when they're, when they're doing shoot arounds and all that stuff, it actually is a thing, especially when you're doing so many different teams. I know you, you're with the Cougars all the time. So you know more of the intricate details, you know more of the personalities, which lends itself. That's I think that's one thing people should know about play by play and broadcasting is that when you have guys who are the team voices, that's that's why we appreciate the Danny Max of the world. That's why we appreciate our local guys because they're with the teams every single day. So they know the habits, they know the routine, they know the personalities, they get to be around those guys. And it's the same thing for you, I'm sure. You get to be around all these student athletes um, and, and digging in to tell those stories, especially when it comes to a sport like baseball, when you need something to fill right. and, and some stories to tell. So, um, again, I tip my cap. You've always been a cosplay professional, so polished, so well done, um, and just so tremendously happy for you and success and and hope the Cam X thing continues for you. Um, and I know for you, the, the sky's the limit. Like I said, when there's, when there's a talented person that's willing to work hard and, and go for it, I, I, I see that all over you. So uh, I wish you nothing but the best. And I appreciate you taking time to do this podcast with Man, me. And I appreciate it, Derek. It was great to catch up even for a little bit. Um, you know, that that's like that's like the one thing about social media is we I get to follow people a little bit. You know, we get to I get to keep up with the people that I want to be keeping up with. Um, so, yeah. Um, and that's great. And I appreciate you taking the time and, and talking to me a little bit. And I appreciate the kind words for sure. Yeah, no, I, I may try to sneak over there for an SIUE yeah. game or two. Uh, I always try to sneak out with my camera uh, now that I have the time. That's become a little bit more of a hobby. So uh, whenever there's a, a team or someone that I know of that needs a photographer, I always shoot an email. So, hey, do you guys need someone that's going to be over at SLU? Got the or mighty SIU? Bradley Braves Bradley. in town this year. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm we'll taking a peek at the schedule. We'll be at so, St. Louis. Uh, we'll be at Mizzou. So. You guys got a heck of a we'll schedule around. I think that they, yeah. I think they've done well. Um, and like I said, it's it, at least at this point, this is this is early, obviously, but it, and it feels like this could be a, a really good year for SIUE, and I hope that it is. Yeah, well, nothing but the best. Good luck to the Cougars going forward, and, and you, sir, keep up the great work. Thank you, man. Appreciate it so much. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of Persons of Interest. This podcast is a personal project with the goal of sharing stories that might inspire others to create their own path. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a guest suggestion, you can reach Derek on Twitter at bdocket. This has been Persons of Interest.